Thanks for checking out our crowdsourcing video for Revenge of the Devil Bat. In this video, we're going to be looking at the crazy origins of the original Devil Bat and the studio who produced it. And then we're going to be looking at our upcoming production, then all the perks you can get for donating. This is going to be kind of a long one, so sit back and enjoy the history of PRC and the Devil Bat. The history of the Producers Releasing Corporation is long and complicated, and sadly some of the precise details have been lost to time. But the details we do have are quite remarkable. PRC was the smallest Poverty Row studio in Hollywood. Despite almost dying several times, they went on to create several classic films, influence modern monster movies, and to be the only B-movie studio ever to be nominated not for one, but two Academy Awards. Our story starts in 1939, when a film exchange manager, Ben Judell, formed a company that would go on to be the producer's releasing corporation. Basically, PRC had a lot of different name changes. I'm not going to go into it, because it's at a level of tedium that would bore everyone except me. So, I'm going to save you from that, and I'm going to refer to the company in all its forms as PRC. Under this company, he produced several exploitation films, but Judell had a dream. He wanted to produce a never-ending stream of cheap exploitation films for independent theatre owners. But if this was to happen, he needed money, and a lot of it. Amazingly, he was able to raise one million dollars. His primary investor being Sigmund Newfield. You might be familiar with his brother, Sam Newfield. Despite directing over 270 films, the only one anyone ever remembers is the Terror in Tiny Town, which is the world's only all midget western. Anyway, we're getting sidetracked. Back to our story. Sigmund became the company's executive producer, and then they bought the then-defunct Puritan and Grand National Studios, and 20 theatres. Then they locked in deals with 12 film exchanges. Then there was nothing left to do but take out a big, splashy ad in Variety that bragged about all the films they were going to make. From there, they produced their first film, and it was pretty much the beginning of the end. It was a controversial film called Hitler, Beast of Berlin. This was one of the first anti-Nazi films ever made. On paper, it should have been a big moneymaker. Considering that World War II started on the 1st of September 1939, and this was released exactly a month later. They should have cashed in big time, but they kept on running into pro-German censors who made the film virtually impossible to see. After many, many battles with the censors, the film eventually was shown and became profitable, but there was a problem. They were banking on the fact that this film was going to make enough money to fund the post-production of their next string of films. Unable to come up with the money, their films were locked deep within the Paith Film Labs. At this point, Sigmund Newfield took over the company. Newfield had a connection within Paith, and basically made a deal in which they got a share of the company, but would remain a silent partner. They did this basically because they didn't want to be associated with Poverty Row. As Judell was no longer needed, he was fired. Sigmund Newfield retooled the studio to more modest goals. Number one, films were to be shot in six days or less. This meant that each film needed around 80 camera setups a day. Number two, films were allocated 50,000 feet of film, which is just over 2.5 hours of film. This means they had to get the entire coverage of a scene within two takes. This is why most of the films are just master shots edited together. Three, films must use as much stock footage as possible. This way, a new film, and I'm doing those air quote things which you can't see, a new film could be shot within two and a half days. Number four, films must be retitled and re-released to exploit new markets. Hitler, Beast of Berlin, featured a then unknown bit actor named Alan Ladd. Several years later, he went on to become a big star. So PRC re-released the film as if Ladd was the main character. 
Okay, so this was make or break time for PRC. They needed a big commercial film, something that would be a guaranteed moneymaker. Thankfully for PRC, the UK had recently banned horror films. As a result, Hollywood cut back on horror productions almost entirely. This also put Bela Lugosi out of work. PRC saw their opportunity, so they quickly devised a script that would exploit Lugosi's Dracula persona without verging on Universal's copyright. Lugosi, who needed work, signed on on the 10th of October, and the cameras were rolling on the 28th, and three days and a little over $21,000 later, they had themselves a film. Amazingly, PRC was able to get the film into theatres by early December. Bella Lugosi plays Dr. Corollas, who's a small-town cosmetic chemist. Corollas is out for revenge on the employees who've got rich off his formulas. He's trained giant devil bats to kill whoever's wearing a special lotion that he's developed. So it's up to a Snoopy reporter and his bumbling sidekick to solve the mystery of the devil bat. What's interesting about the Devil Bat is that it formed the template for all modern monster movies. Unlike Frankenstein's monster or the Wolfman, we don't actually see the creation of the Devil Bat. It's in existence before the film starts. This is a new kind of film in which us, the audience, don't want to become personally involved with the monster. PRC knew that their audience didn't want nor need long setups. They knew the novelty of just having a monster on screen was no longer enough. Audiences wanted to see more and more bloodshed. They wanted the films to go straight to the jugular, as it were. And on that note, the second most important thing about this movie is that it established the one kill per reel rule. PRC knew what their audiences wanted, and they gave it to them in spades. So you won't be surprised to learn that The Devil Bat was a huge success, and it helped revive Lugosi's career. Within a year, he was back making major studio films. The movie was so successful, it spawned two pseudo-remakes, one novelization, and that novel has its own sequel. The Devil Bat itself even makes a cameo in Wild Horse Phantom. PRC later released a sequel called Devil Bat's Daughter, and boy, it is a doozy. It's as if the writers of this film had never seen the original. Basically, there's a psychologist who wants to kill his wife, so he convinces the daughter of the Devil Bat that she's a vampire killer, so he can frame her for his wife's death. That in itself is okay until you realise the film's set in a different town. The characters gloss over the details of Lugosi's death. And at the end, Lugosi is found innocent of all the murders we actually saw him commit in the first film. Other than that, it's a fine sequel. Revenge of the Devil Bat is a modern day sequel to the original film. And believe it or not, it's unrelated sequel. John Link stars as the grandson of Dr. Paul Carruthers. He returns to the town of Heathville to seek revenge on the descendants of the people who wronged his grandfather and mother. Revenge of the Devil Bat isn't a cynical project that's attempting to cash in on a public domain film. The people involved genuinely care about the original film, and they want to create something that not only complements the first two films, but also adds to the Devil Bat universe. This film strives to be a love letter to pulp cinema, and most importantly, to be a genuinely entertaining film that can stand on its own two feet. The film will feature some of your favourite cult actors, many coming from the golden age of exploitation. First up, we have the living exploitation legend, Gary Kent. Kent's filmography is staggering. He's worked with pretty much every major cult film director of the 20th century, such as Don Cassarelli, Ted V. Michaels, Ray Dennis Steckler, Al Adamson, David L. Hewitt, Peter Bogdanovich, William Shatner, Stephen Apostolov, Gary Graver, Yuli Lomel, and Brian De Palma. He's also appeared in a screenplay that was written by Edward D. Wood Jr. Next, we have the beautiful Lynn Larry. Larry has worked with the likes of Paul Schrader, Lloyd Kaufman, and David Cronenberg. 
but she's probably best remembered for her performance in George A. Romero's The Crazies. And we also have the ever-popular alternative cinema stars John Link and Ruby LaRocca. Rounding out the cast, we have two of Don Dola's favourite actors. We have Dick Dizel and George Strover. And we have Plan 9 from Outer Space's Conrad Brooks. We're currently in the middle of the production. The money raised will be used for the following. 1400 will be used for actors' fees. And the remaining 1200 will be used for transport and accommodation. We need to shoot some additional scenes in Austin, Texas and Baltimore. Let's be honest. Most crowdsourcing perks suck. Naturally, you're never actually going to get value for money because that would defeat the purpose. But... We've tried to be as generous as possible. We're offering things at a much better price than you'll usually find. The perks will be produced on demand, so we don't have any pictures of them yet. So, this is what you're gonna get. One dollar will get you a thank you in the credits of the final film. Five dollars will get you the above, plus a digital download of the finished film. Fifteen dollars will get you the above and a physical DVD. $20 will get you the above, and a magnet. $25 will get you the above, plus a keychain. $35 will get you the above, plus a poster. $50 will get you the above, plus a cool four-piece lobby card set depicting characters from the movie. $100 will get you the above autographed. $150 will get you the above, plus a devil bat that was used in pre-production. $200 will get you the above, plus a producer's credit and a visit to the set. $250 will get you the above, plus one of the two six-foot-long devil bat props used in the actual movie. $300 will get you the above, plus a short scene in the movie. As I said before, the film is currently in production. Regardless of what happens, this film will get made. But with your help, it can be a bigger, better film. If you're a fan of old school horror films, please donate. And thank you. We really honestly do appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. I'm going to let our good friend Bella Lugosi take us out. Goodbye.